All right, so now that we know a little bit about the most important basic process modules, we can put them together and make a very simple process. And that's what I've done here. I've made a, uh, a process flow chart out of all the process modules that we've learned about that represents a basic coding line. So parts will come in, uh, they get sprayed with a coating, and then they get cured. Uh, but different parts that come in will get different coatings, and even though they all go through the same spraying process, uh, some coatings will need to have a second cure. So that's what's being represented with this process here. So we'll just go from left to right. We can see part arrival. It's a, a random or exponential distribution with a 1.25 uh, hour mean time between arrivals. Then we assign the coding to the parts. And for this, we're using a, an attribute that we stick on each of the entities that flows through. And then it goes to the spraying process. The spraying process is a seize delay release process because all it needs to do is seize a sprayer, delay it for the amount of time that the spraying needs to be done, and then after the spraying is done, it releases the sprayer so that the sprayer can spray the next part that comes through. So you can see the resource it's using is a sprayer, and it only needs one at a time. And so the delay time is a uniform time between 0.5 hours and 1.5 hours, and it's value added since uh, the whole job of this line is to just do coding. Then we can see curing. All parts will go through curing at least once. Again, uh, there's a curing oven with two slots in it, so think of it as a very large oven with very large parts that you can allow to put two parts in at any time you want, um, but you can't put more than two parts in. So you can see it sees delay and releases the oven, and it needs one oven for quantity. And it's a constant two hours that needs to be used for the first cure. And then you can go over here and look at done curing. And so what I've done here is it's a two-way by condition and it'll look at the attribute named coding. And I just pulled it down from this, this drop down coding. If it's greater than or equal to two, because I have different codings, zero, one, two, and three, so four different types of coatings. If it's two or more, so two or three, uh, the, the part will be done curing automatically. Uh, and if it's not, if it's a zero or one, thus it goes down the false branch, it'll need to be cured for a second time. And what we also do is we'll count the cure parts that need to go for a second cure just so we can have um, some data about it to bring back to our managers that we're just simulating this process for. So you can see the way we set up this record module, it's just a count and we're tallying one for every part that comes through. And now you see the cure second process. And what's interesting is it sees delay release just like this cure process over here, but it's using the same resource and it's using the same number of resources. And this is how the two processes are sort of tied together. Even though they're sort of separately de depicted, you can think of it as on the shop floor, there's only one sort of oven to put the parts into. And so the process, even though, and the flowchart are different places, really what would be going on in the system is that you take the part back to the same oven and you're really using the same oven slots. And then once it's either done with its second cure or it was cured the first time through, you dispose of it. And I'd like to look at the resources that we're using here. So the sprayer you can see is fixed capacity, capacity one, so you can only have one part being sprayed at a time. And the oven, uh, remember how I told you that there were two slots for it? Well, here's the capacity. So we can have two different parts be in the oven at the same time. So we could have one being sort of doing its first cure, and we could also have one doing its second cure, or we could have two doing their first cure, or even two doing their second cure. It all sort of depends. And actually what I've done is I've made the priority of the second cure uh, a little higher than 
the priority of the normal cure, the first cure, and that's just a medium, just because uh, this is almost a finished part, so people will give some precedence to getting that one done and out of the shop floor, uh, as opposed to new parts that are coming through. So that's the basic process module, and now we need to think about how can we run it. Now that we have this awesome process flowchart all put together representing our system, we want to run it. And how we run things is just by going up here and pressing play, or going to run and saying go. So if I go ahead and press the go button up here, uh, it starts running, and Arena will just keep running this until I press the stop button, because there is no stopping condition sort of inherent in the simulation. Every simulation that you make needs to have an event occur inside of the simulation where when that event is fired, that means the simulation should end. So Arena doesn't have anything like that right now. We didn't set a, uh, a maximum part arrival, so it won't, it won't stop after a thousand parts. It won't stop after, after a million parts. It won't stop, to, stop after a billion parts. It'll just keep going because there are no terminating conditions. So... What I'll do is I'll stop it, and we'll, Arena will go back into edit mode, and we can either go here and say we only want to look at a thousand parts coming through, but I think that's kind of boring. So I'll actually say um, I want to run it for a shift. I want to run it for eight hours and see what it's like. So what we do is we can go to run and then setup, and this is uh, pretty important. This tells Arena how you want to run it, and it helps build in those end events so that Arena won't run off to infinity, and it'll actually run for a certain amount of time and then come back with some results that you can bring to your, to your colleagues or your boss. So what you can do here is you can pick your replication length, and this actually determines a time period. Say, I want to run the simulation for an infinite amount of time as it has defaulted here. Otherwise... I want to run it for eight hours, so just put eight hours in, so replication is eight and time units is hours, great. Um, you can do some things with adjusting the hours per day and then have a, a warm-up period. Uh, usually if you have um, some type of system that'll have like a, a transient uh, sort of period that needs to warm up, you might put some time in there, uh, but for this system we won't worry about it. And we can also put a number of replications in. And this is where the real beauty and power of simulation comes from, is that you can spend some time, and you spend a lot of the time building out uh, this sort of process flowchart representing your system. And what you want to do is you want to be able to make changes to it and uh, do certain things and tweaks to it so that you know relatively confidently that if you do those things, uh, X will happen, or you'll get this much return on investment for a machine that you bought. And the way that you do that is by having a lot of uh, run simulations. So uh, what I'll do is I'll bump the replications up to 10 for this, our purposes, but usually I like to have 1,000 or even 10,000. If they run quickly, why not? You get more data, um, and it gives you sort of better confidence in the results that you're, you're presenting. So you go ahead and press apply, and then you can say OK to get rid of this prompt. And now when you press the play button, the, the status bar will be slightly different. You can see it's 5 out of 10, 7 out of 10, and it tells you what time it was going through. And it ran really, really quickly. And what happens is Arena now has run through all the replications. Each one of the replications was an 8-hour day. Um, and now we can look at the results. So let's go ahead and look at the results. Press yes, and Arena will think for a little bit, and then hopefully display the results report. You can do it, computer. You can do it. So close. All right, so here is the report that Arena automatically generates for you. 
And so you can see a couple things. The first page is usually just the number of parts that came out on average through each replication or on average of all the replications. So you see that every day we put out about four parts, which is, I guess, a little on, on par or maybe a little less if we have uh, one, one point one part arriving every hour and a quarter or so. And so you can scroll down. You can either choose to scroll down through the report um, or through the pages. I like to use these sort of uh, headers to go through. So the first big header is entity. And you can see the value add time for the part on average. It's spent 3.38 time units, and the time units are up here are in hours. You can change that uh, based on sort of your run settings. And you can see the half width. These are 95% confidence, confidence interval half widths, as well as minimum average, maximum average, minimum value, and maximum value for the value added time, followed by non value added time, and then wait time. Uh, Non-value at a time, we didn't have any. We didn't have any processes that didn't have uh, a type of NVA, um, so that's why we have zero for all of them. But we do have wait times because we had queues at several parts throughout the system. So we can see on average, uh, a part might wait about an hour to get through all the parts of the system. You can also see the number of parts coming in. About every day is about seven or eight. Um, and the number out is about, about four. And you can see the number at the end of the day, the, no, the work in progress is the, the difference between the two. So it's about three and a half. And then let's go into the queues and look at them. We can see uh, the waiting time in each queue. So the wait time for uh, curing first time is about 0.2 hours. Uh, the second uh, waiting time for the cure is about a third of an hour and then the spraying is almost an hour and that's because there's only one spot and one resource to take care of the spraying and everything needs to go through it so that's why it'd be our most constrained resource and you can also see in addition to waiting time you can see the the number waiting down here too so that's the queue perspective of the system then we can look at the resources. So uh, important things to think about your resources are what, what's the utilization for each. So you can see uh, oven utilization is about around 70%, uh, which isn't too bad. Sprayer is uh, 0.86. It's a little above the 85 that everyone sort of says is the magic number. So you might think about well, what, what should we do? Should we maybe buy another sprayer? Or are we happy with the system performance? And ultimately, a lot of these questions, uh, you can sort of use Arena to see, well, what would happen if we bought that extra sprayer? Or what would happen if we um, got another oven and allowed different coatings or different parts of the factory to use that uh, oven, even though we might not be using it all the time? So answering these questions is really the, the main benefit of why you do a simulation. So you can see the number busy, uh, number schedule doesn't really make any sense here because we're not changing the schedules. Uh, and then you can look at the, the actual sort of a nice little bar graph of the difference between the two. Um, although the, you have to pay attention to the axes here because um, the units are pretty small and there's not actually that, that huge of a difference between the two. And then at the very bottom, bottom there's a user specified. And this is where our, um, our module that we wanted to have rec things record, our record module, this is where that information gets recorded. So we can see <clears throat> on average we have 1.8 parts going through that second cure every day. And we have a half width on it and we have the minimum average and the maximum average. Um, and otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to get this information directly from this report if we didn't have that uh, record module. This would not be on here. And we would have to either uh, do the math to figure out what percentage of parts are going to go through that part of the flowchart, 
uh, or do some type of other sort of workaround. But if you have the record module, uh, use it. So that's that process at a very high level. Uh, you can feel free to download this specific arena model and play around with it. I'd highly recommend it. And that's all. Have a great day.